Previously, we learned how to create and run a basic Next.js application. Now, we're going to dig into the project's structure to understand what makes everything tick when we run our application. I've got the Hello World project open in VS Code, and at the root level, we can see four folders and 10 files. Let's break this down one by one, starting with the files. First, we have package.json. This is where all our project dependencies and scripts live. For dependencies, we've got the essentials, Next.js version 15, React and React DOM version 19. Depending on what you choose during setup, you might also have TypeScript with its types, Tailwind with post CSS, and ESLint packages. The scripts section is pretty straightforward. Dev for development mode, build for production builds, start for running the production server, and lint for setting up Next.js's built-in ESLint configuration a straightforward package.json file with dependencies and scripts. Next up are our configuration files. We've got next.config.ts for Next.js settings, tsconfig.json for TypeScript, eslint.config.mjs for eslint, and both tailwind.config.ts and postcss.config.mjs for Tailwind CSS. There are also a few files we won't focus on much in this course. Package lock.json, which ensures consistent installation of our dependencies. Git ignore for version control. The readme file, which contains a few instructions related to running, building, and deploying the application. And nextenv.d.ts, which contains the TypeScript declarations for Next.js. Now let's proceed to the different folders. First is the .next folder. This gets created when you run either dev or build scripts. It's where your Next.js application actually gets served from. You will notice that this folder is git ignored, so don't worry about this one too much during development. Then we have node modules, the home of all our installed dependencies. This gets created when you run npm install, or in our case, when we ran the dev script which handles the installation automatically if needed. Like the .next folder, this one's git ignored too, and we don't need to worry about it during development. The third folder is the public folder. It's pretty important. It's where all your static assets like images and SVGs go. Finally, we've got the star of the show, the source folder. Inside source, there is the app folder, which is the app router. This is where we will spend most of our time in this course. Currently, it contains four files. Fave icon for the browser tab icon, globals.css for application-wide styles, layout.tsx for shared UI elements across pages, and page.tsx, which creates what you see at localhost 43000. This page.tsx is what we tweaked earlier. The home component defined here slots into layout.tsx as children prop to create the complete UI. In layout.tsx, depending on the minor version of Next.js, you might see Geist font imported as a Google font, or might also be referenced as a local font. That does not affect our learnings, so don't worry too much about it. But let me explain how it all comes together. When we run the command npm run dev in the terminal, the execution starts from package.json, moves to layout.tsx, rendering the root layout component. For the URL localhost 3000, it looks for the component in page.tsx within the app folder. That is our home component. It renders this component inside the root layout. You might now be wondering how this app folder handles routing in our application. But before we get there, we need to cover some new React concepts that are fundamental to how we write Next.js code. Let's explore those next. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.